Hello, famous journalism majors from NMSU, Journalism and Media Studies. Uh, we're going to continue with uh, some tips for adjusting your audio and also um, the steps for using the title tool so that we can use text. Um, okay, um, right now we're going to choose um, we're going to choose some clips and we're going to bring those down to the um, to the sequence right there I put um, an endpoint and then right there I'm going to set an out point an I and an O and then I click on the I click on the clip and then I just I click and hold and then I drag that um, down to video one uh, and audio one and once again Right there it says keep existing. We're, we're, we're going to do keep existing because we already chose our settings. Something that's um, super, super important to, to look at um, are these little um, levers down here on the, on the, on the far right-hand side. Um, sometimes what happens when people are editing, they accidentally move these up and down and if they move it this way, if, they, if you scroll down, uh, right there on the arrow where I'm at right here, I'm, I'm clicking on that black part right here, and then I'm clicking and I'm holding and I'm dragging that little bar up and down, okay? Sometimes what happens, well, the audio will disappear if you accidentally move that down. Um, something that I'm gonna do right now so that you guys, so that, so that you guys can understand that you can delete audio tracks and add audio tracks. Um, first of all, I'm going to go up here to the blue, to this blue line, and right there it's going to change from the arrow to that other little icon, and I'm going to click and hold, and I'm going to I'm going to drag, and I'm not too sure why it's not doing it. There it is. Um, I'm going to click and hold. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller up here so that you guys can see what's going on down here. I'm going to delete audio tracks 6, 5, and 4 for now. And the way you do that is by, um, by going to uh, Sequence. I'm just going to delete those audio tracks. For example, right now we're editing. Um, we would we're editing um, a Vosat, the the same thing that we were doing with the massage script. Um, so the, for the B-roll, we're using a max of like maybe two to three audio channels, and we don't need all these audio channels right now. So we're going to go to sequence, and then we're going to go we're going to go all the way down. And we're going to delete tracks, okay? And right there it says empty and empty. The only thing that we're doing is we're deleting. Um, and also I think I'm going to bring another one down here. Um, and I'm just going to move this one down to, to two. Um, so right there, we're going to delete um, audio layers number three, four, three through uh, three through six. Later on, if you want to add an audio track, you can add it with no problem. I'm just trying to clean up your sequence a little bit so that you don't see, so you have more space here. Um, delete tracks, and then we're going to delete. We're not going to delete any video tracks. We're going to delete the audio tracks, and we're going to click OK. It says empty right there, um, and that applies to all those empty ones that we have right there. And then that's what it looks like right there. And I think it just looks a little bit more manageable. Um, and this is, this is super, super handy, especially when we first start getting into Premiere. And... Um, and also, once again, don't, don't forget that you can hover 
it changes from the arrow right here. This is the arrow. And then if I slowly move down, it's changing from the arrow to that other little, um, that other little icon. And you click and hold, and then you drag that so that you can see your audio box is a little bit larger. And then once again, you can, you can make your sequence larger. Um, you can make these, you can make your clips look larger by clicking on this and just moving it either to the left or the right. And also you can do plus or minus on your keyboard, okay? Um, okay, so we're gonna go here and there's our first clip. And it's a lady that's chopping corn. And then I'm gonna delete this one. Um, this is the one that we're looking at here. And then we already lost it again on the right. But that's okay. Okay, so then we're gonna put in another clip. And then right, right here, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm building a sequence right here with this, with this lady. Uh, and my computer, for some reason, I'm not too sure if it likes these files, but some of these files are kind of freezing up. I don't know why. Um, So I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna set an endpoint right there. And then I'm gonna set an out point, and then I'm gonna bring that clip down here. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that audio down to to two, okay? And the, the way you do that, um, I'm gonna do a command Z to undo that. Um, I'm going to bring down the audio to, I'm clicking and holding on the, on that, on that audio layer. And then I'm just bringing it down to two. Okay. And the, the, the reason I'm doing that, and, and I'm going to show you guys something that we didn't talk about in class because there were so many things to talk about. And I'm going to bring in, Another clip here. I'm not too sure if there's movement in the camera, but for some reason this is freezing. But I'm going to set an out point, and then um, I'm going to bring that, and then I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm alternating my audio between one and two, one and two, and. I'm going to make my sequence larger just a little bit. Once again, the white lines um, is what gives you the capability to, uh, to increase or decrease your audio. Okay. Um, you hover on the white line and then you click and hold on it and then you drag that down. Okay. Um, oops. Okay. So then I'm going to bring this one down. The audio levels for the B-roll for a VOSOT and also for a package and or for a voiceover, the average length, the, the average audio um, over here on your audio meter should be roughly at about 30. Um, so I'm bringing them down. I, for the most part, do not pay attention to the little numbers down here. I usually just pay attention to the audio meter down here. And um, so it's just going to vary from person to person, OK? Okay. Um, once again, I'm having a little bit of problem um, with these files, and it's kind of like slowing down. Um, 
I think on a totally, totally different uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use keyframes, okay? Um, and so right now, I'm going to bring in, um, once again, the audio levels, they, the, 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 the levels for the B-roll should be roughly, um, roughly at about minus, um, minus 36 in that range. Every shot is going to be different. And um, don't forget that you can, if you want to stretch out your, uh, your video, you can stretch it out to the left or to the right. It just depends on what you're trying to do. You can also set in points and out points. Um, it, like let's say if we want to cut out, um, if we want to cut out this last part where all that movement of the camera is at, I'm going to set an eye, an in point right there. And then I'm going to go to the very end of the clip. And then you can go uh, with your arrow keys to set it up very, very precisely. And then I'm going to set an O. And this is what's highlighted right there. And you can, if you want to delete that, you can just hit delete and it takes it out. Okay. There are other ways to do that without setting endpoints. To delete your endpoints, um, let's say for example, let's say for example, I have an endpoint right there. I have an out point right there. If you want to delete your endpoints and your out points, all you have to do is click um, type I, and it uh, it does away with your endpoints and um, and your out points. Okay, so there it is right there in and it deletes them. You can use the razor blade if you wish, if you want to delete something. Um, I don't use the razor blade that often. I just think that the endpoints are uh, much quicker, but you can use a razor blade. And right there I highlighted, I, I did a razor blade, and then you click it, and then you delete it. And then if you want to move this together, you can by clicking on black. Okay, um, and I'm, Command Z, as in zebra, allows you to out, uh, to undo something that you've accidentally done that you don't want to delete, etc. Okay, and I'm just doing a Command Z right there. Okay, um, now we're gonna get um, we're gonna go to clip eight fifty nine. And beautiful. I don't know what else to say. What What did you all plan? Uh, okay, so he's about to start his soundbite right there. Um, I'm going to go back because I I don't want to confuse you guys. Um. When we're editing, um, when we're editing the B-roll for the Vosot, the B-roll is on one sequence, okay? And what I can do right now, because I don't want to confuse you guys, um, this is going to be the the SOT, the interview that we're using for this demonstration for the Vosot, and then I'm going to go to a completely new sequence because that's where we're going to put the, the SOT, the interview. We're going to go to sequence and then the AVCHD is already open. Remember this folder, uh, it's AVCHD and then you choose 1080i and then we're highlighting the fourth one and then right here we're going to put, we're leaving sequence in the name and then we're putting, uh, I'm going to put, I'm just going to put SOT Community Garden. South Albuquerque, South ABQ, and then we're going to click OK. And now you can see that we're, we have multiple sequences, and I think some of you had already done that roughly two weeks ago before our spring break began. And I'm going to go to, to the sequence, and then I'm going to, uh, we're going to play him for about tomatoes, 10 seconds. chili. He's talking about all the vegetables. 
that uh, they planted. Herb called papalo from where I'm from. For this community garden. Yeah, we use papalo. Uh, we use it like in our carnes asadas for tacos. And then I'm just going to end them on uh, on tacos. And then we're going to set an we're going to set an out point and I forgot to put an in point. I'm just going to set an I right there and you notice that the I, uh, the I starts right there. The O ends right there. So this is the chunk of, uh, um, of interview that we've highlighted. And then we're just going to bring, we're going to click and hold right here. And then we're, you can put the video on video layer number one. And we're going to keep existing because we already chose our settings. And our audio is on audio layer number one. And then just remember that you can make your audio boxes larger. You hover from the arrow just down just a little bit right here. That's where I'm circling. You go from the arrow and then you just hover down. And then you click and hold and then you make that box larger. That way we can see our audio levels right here. Uh, okay, his audio is a little bit high. His audio should be peaking to 18. And we're, I'm clicking and holding on the audio line, and I'm just bringing that down. Tomato, chili, uh, herb called papalo from... He's more or less peaking like at about, um, at about 18. And his SOT is going to be on... Um, we're going to move his audio, which is... Um, if you notice, we, I put a wireless lavalier on him. The lavalier was plugged into audio channel number one in the camera. And we're going to move his audio from the left. And we're also going to move it. We're going to move his main audio. We're going to keep it on the left. But we're also going to move that same audio to the right. That way um, it's coming out of both speakers at the same time. And it sounds much fuller. And we're gonna do a we're gonna do a command. We're gonna do a command click, and then you go down to your arrow down here. I'm gonna do that again. Command, I'm down here. We're gonna do a command click, and then just go down on the arrow. And we're looking for audio channels, and we're gonna select a left left. Just put all of these on this side. Okay, left, left. And then now, and then I clicked OK. And then um, now his audio right here is coming out from both channels. I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to do that again um, because I didn't show you over here. Um, his audio, yeah, his main audio, is um, is coming out of audio like layer number one. The other, the other audio on the right channel is an is another is another microphone that I had plugged into audio channel number two because I I was doing interviews with both of them at the same time. Um, so that's where the that's where these audio that's where that audio is coming from. Okay. Once again, we'll do a, a command and then a click. And then it's either going to be it's either going to be a command click or a left click. It just depends on whether you're using a PC. I'm using an external mouse, like a PC mouse, on my Mac because I, I like to use a mouse. And I'm doing a command, and then I'm using a click, and then right here, and then we're going to audio channels once again, and then we're moving his main audio that was on the left. And we're also putting it on the right. And then now, you, uh, as we just heard before, it sounds much fuller. Papalo from where I'm from. Yeah, we use papalo. Uh, we use it like in our carnes asadas for tacos. Okay. And um, so I think our audio is our audio layer. Our our audio layer uh, levels are pretty good. Um, we use papalo. They're peaking uh, to eighteen. It. What like we don't want is for the audio to be up here tackles? in zero in orange, okay? And his mm -hmm. his uh, his sound bite ended. Like in our carnes asadas for tacos, okay? And then let's let's pretend that this is the uh, SOT for the Vosat 
and let's pretend that there were there was b-roll uh, according to the script I think we had the identical same thing for the massage script we had b-roll um, after the after the SOT and the anchors kept reading uh, over the over the b-roll and let's just choose a random clip here we could We could go into um, we could go to a close up. So let's say, for example, if we're going to B roll after the SOT. We do not want to go to a medium shot for the B roll. Our transition shot is going to be a close up, and this is a really good example of a close up. And we're going to set an endpoint. We're setting the endpoint right here, and we're going to play that one, two, three, four, five, and then I set an out point. And in this case, I'm going to put my sound on audio layer number two. And this is going to, this is going to give us, a, this is, we're going to be able to show you a really good example here of when to use um, keyframes. And that's so that we can fade the audio up and down. There was different audio out there at that location. There were people eating food, there were people serving food, there were people picking food, and there was also a band that was playing, okay? Um, for tacos? Coming, um, you notice that the, that the first, uh, that, the, that the audio that's coming in after the SOT, it's a li it comes in a little bit too abrupt. And this is the perfect example, and I want you guys to start utilizing this when we do our editing, okay? And um, once again, we're going to use, we're going to fade this audio up using keyframes, okay? And so right there, I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm clicking on this right here. Notice that the arrow changes to that red little icon, and then I click and hold, and then if... There, there should be a little bit of audio before that, and what I'm doing is I'm gonna I'm overlapping this audio underneath his soundbite so that it fades up, and what we're gonna do there we're gonna fade this up using keyframes, and you can uh, the keyframe is this right here this little um, pen tool right here if I click on it it's turning to blue, and also. Um, so now that the, our arrow, uh, notice our arrow is now turning to the pen tool, okay? Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to switch it to V. And uh, when, once you switch back to V, it gives you um, control with the actual arrow. Um, if you want to choose, if you want to choose the pen tool on your keyboard, the shortcut is P, and you're going to notice the arrow is going to change to um, to uh, to the pen tool, so it changes it from V to pen tool. Okay, um, and right here I'm I'm moving the pen tool right there. I'm clicking and I'm dropping a couple of little blue little um, little dots. That's what's gonna that's what's gonna allow us to fade the audio up so that the music or whatever audio when it comes in after the SOT, that way it, is, it, it isn't so abrupt and it fades in, okay? We're going to bring that audio down just a little bit so that it's at roughly like about 30 right here. And then we're just going to continue. Let, let's just pretend that after the SOT, let's pretend that we had like, let's say, um, 15 seconds, 10 more seconds of B-roll with the anchors continuing to read. And then we would just go forward on the on the raw. I held the shots a little bit long out there because I was not in a rush and I'm, I was shooting this for somebody else as a freelance for this independent producer from Massachusetts. And uh, I'm setting the endpoint right there. And this is a this is a good example of sequencing. Um, the action isn't moving, it's not going anywhere, 
and um, I set an endpoint and an out point on the raw clips and I click and then I bring that down and right here is where I'm going to be alternating my audio. Uh, I'm going to bring it down more or less to that range and then okay uh, I'm very very picky about audio so we're gonna we're gonna be overlapping the audio we're overlapping this one into the next shot and then we're gonna select P the pen tool on your keyboard our arrow is gonna change from P to the pen tool all I'm gonna do is set one little dot there those are called keyframes and then I'm fading this up and then I'm gonna stretch this one a little bit essentially we're overlapping our audio and we're mixing it up and down I'm once again se selecting P and then I'm clicking I'm setting one there so that it overlaps and that way the 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 the, the audio is uh, is mixing from one shot um, to the other okay and then on the next shot um, you would want to, okay, we're, we're going to continue this sequence just so that you guys can see the next shot. I'm not too sure where it's at. I'm not too sure why I held that shot that long. I'm going to try and find just a general wide shot out here. Um, and then we'll, we'll, I'm just going to use that as our wide shot. One, two, three, four, five. And then I set an out point right there. And then I bring that down. Um, I'm going to go back to V. I'm switching from the pen tool to V. And then I'm bringing that down, okay? And then I'm mixing the audio once again. I'm just, I'm holding. I'm going to undo that. That way you can see that a little bit slower. I hope I'm not going too fast. And then um, you're going from the arrow to, the, to, that, to that one mode right there. And then you're just stretching the audio into the next shot for like maybe a second and a half. And then we're going to the pen tool. Go to P on your keyboard and then you're you're putting in one keyframe this this first one right there towards uh, this this first one that I put towards the end that one's your anchor and then this is going to allow you to fade that one down and then at the same time you're going to stretch this one on the bottom that way they're they're um, they're fading up and down and they're overlapping okay and then we're going to set one keyframe there and then another keyframe those of us, those of us that are going to be going into news, um, sometimes you're going to be under strict, strict deadlines, and you're not going to have a lot of time to work in the keyframes. Um, sometimes you're going to be slammed, and you have to get the the story out. Uh, but after a while, you should be able to work in um, the the process of keyframes even if you're under like tight, tight deadline. Um, once again, you're overlapping your audio because you want to make everything sound really, really good. And this prevents the audio from being too abrupt um, when you're going from shot to shot. And I can explain that to you by telephone, by phone, if you wish. Um, they don't do this a lot in the movies for the most part. But for television news, it really, really bothers me when I hear television news stories when they're not using keyframes. Um, so right there, we're fading it up and down, etc. Okay. Um, so that was the B-roll after his um, after his SOT. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to put the CG. We're going to put the name bar on him. And here's our here's our background that we're using, and this is an uh, this is an older um, CG. Obviously, the name of the department is Journalism and Media Studies, and 
this, uh, this CG is actually going to go on video layer number two. And normally, I like to... Um, okay. Um, you notice that, that it looks super, super small right there. And what you can do to make this, uh, the, the background larger, you can double click on the actual CG right here. And for some reason, I'm not able to adjust it there. I'm not too sure why. There we go. Okay, so what, what I did right there, um, I, I double clicked right here on the, uh, on the actual window. And right there, there's multiple ways to make this, um, to make this larger. So you go from the, you, you can make it larger from the right hand side or from the, or from the left hand side. Okay, and then, and then you can just bring this down. And I'm not too sure. why it's doing that. I'm not too sure if it's because I have a, such a small screen. For now, I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller. Um, and then now, um, so we're dealing with with uh, multiple audio uh, multiple video layers. Our video is on video layer number one. Our CG is on video layer number two. Okay, and now we're gonna we're gonna go into um, we're gonna go to file, and then we're gonna go to to um, to new, and we're gonna go down here to legacy title. Okay, and then right there. This is uh, this is what we're going to title the text that uh, that we're eventually going to put on top of that background. The title is going to be um, I'm just going to put this as um, his name is his name is uh, Desi Desifredo. Uh, Desifredo Garcia. This is not the actual text that we're putting on top. Okay, this is just the name of the, his title of the of the actual text and how it's going to appear down here. Okay, and then it opens up this box, and then right there we can um, right there. So we're going to be hovering between the arrow and this title. For pretty much this entire thing, when we're putting in, uh, when we're putting in his text, okay. And what we're going to do is, uh, with T, you're able to um, you're able to put in his text. Don't worry about the text covering up NMSU journalism. For right now, we, we can we can move the text later on, okay. And so his name is Desi Desifredo um, Garcia. And then if uh, now we can we can reposition it, and we can go to the arrow down here, this little arrow, and that just gives us the ability to move this up and down. Okay. Um, as far as your fonts are concerned, um, I'm going back to the title to the T, and I'm just highlighting it, and then here over here on the right side where it says font family. You'll choose. Um, we're we're just going to choose Arial for now, okay? Um, and then we go back to the arrow. The arrow gives you the ability to move the text either to to move the text wherever you wish to put it, okay? And then I'm just going to leave it there for now. And then um, I use I use I use different I use uh, two different boxes. To create the text, so then underneath, um, we're going to put 
Um, we're going to put um, Albuquerque resident. Okay, and then um, and then we're going to go to the arrow to uh, to place it a little bit. Um, usually, the title of the person. Let's say let's say if um, let's say if you're um, if it's a student that you interview on campus or some person out on the street or you're doing a story at a fire and you interview the firefighter you put the title of the person a little bit smaller than the uh, than the size for the name of the person and we're going to we're going to make this smaller by going up here and we're going to hover on we're going to hover it's kind of tricky at first when you start dealing with the with this uh, with the size all you have to do is click and then dra uh, click and hold and drag it to the left or the right, and that makes the text um, smaller. Okay, and then I'm just going to position it just a little bit. And the, the other thing that we can do is um, I highlighted um, his name. And then what we can do also is we're, we're, we're going down here and we're going to put um, a little bit of a shadow so that, um, so that there's a little bit of a shadow so that the name pops out um, just a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one. And we're going to put shadow on that one. And it just makes it pop out just a little bit, okay? Um, while we were, as soon as we started typing all our text, um, I'm going to minimize this. You can, you can minimize this. We're not going to lose it. As soon as we started typing, um, the, uh, his name started appearing down here. So that's the text that we're actually going to put on top on video layer number three, which is um, above the CG, the background, and then once again we have our video. So once again we're dealing with three video, la video layers. The images that we had from the story are video one, and then video two is the background, and then video three is the text. Um, for the most part, I think we're done with the text, and then all you have to do is click on, the, on, the, click on this box right here, and then click and hold, and then drag it, and then you're taking it to video layer number three. And you notice that it's off just a little bit. All you have to do is just click and then drag that a little bit to the left. And you can make your sequence a little bit larger just to see. I'm going to make the, the sequence a little bit larger so that we have more space here. I'm going to the blue, the blue line. Notice that it's changing from the arrow to that, and then we're moving that all the way to the left. And then um, we're going to make... And then, um, okay, so we're just checking to see if, if it comes in properly. Um, my, for some reason, once again, my computer's slowing down a little bit, okay? Um, and right there, the CG is coming in, um, is coming in, I'm going to save as... Uh, to tomato, chili... ...is coming in as a straight cut. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to bring that in, we're going we're gonna to fade that in with a dissolve, okay? Um, and we're going to go into we're just going to dissolve that in okay notice that it comes in as a straight cut and we're going to go to this little arrow right here there's lots of things within premiere 
uh, don't be intimidated. Just go slowly with what we're doing. And we're going to go to, I'm going to click out again, and I'm going to click on this little arrow right here, these two arrows, and we're going to go into effects. And then we're going to go to video uh, transitions down here. All you have to do is click on the, on the little arrow on the left, and then we're going to go to Dissolve. And the only thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a Dissolve on the, on, the, on the CG background and on the text, which was the, the text that we just used in the Title tool. We're going to click on the Cross Dissolve. We're going to click on that, and then we're, we're going to hold, click and hold, and then drop that on each layer, front and back, okay? And I still don't know if there's a way to apply dissolves all at the same time. I've tried to find shortcuts, but I haven't. And once again, we're going to do a cross dissolve here, and then we're doing a cross dissolve at the end. That way it fades in and out, okay? There are some television stations that do dissolve ins and dissolve out, um, so that you're, you're going to run into different, uh, different ideas from different TV stations. Okay, so here's the uh, SOT. Uh, and there's the dissolve. Tomato, okay. chili. Once again, for some reason, my computer is slowing uh, down. I have Papalo no idea. From where I'm from. Hope it doesn't stop. Yeah. And there it is. Uh, to tomato, chili, uh, herb called papalo okay. from where I'm from. Yeah, we use. And um, so that's the that that's the method that you use for um, for putting in um, the CG and the the names. Okay. Um, once again, we're dealing with three la three layers there. This is video. And remember that you can make your video uh, boxes smaller as well. Uh, for the most part, I normally do not, I usually leave the video boxes kind of small. Uh, one of the most important things for me is to have more space for my audio boxes so that I can see the audio down here. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I think what I'm going to add into this is also the, um, the, the, the export, okay? We're going to export this and the set your endpoint. Uh, I, I like to set endpoints and outpoints. Some people say that you don't have to put endpoints and outpoints to export, but I usually do. I'm used to working on different applications such as Avid and Premiere and other editing softwares. So I'm used to putting in an endpoint and then I'm going to move the cursor to the very end. And I'm just going to go right there. And then I'm going to set an out point and then you're going to notice that right there, our entire sequence is highlighted, and um, once uh, w once you set your endpoints and outpoints, Premiere is going to export everything that's highlighted with ins and outs. Okay, and so then to, uh, to export, we're going to go to File. Okay, I'm just going to slow down, and we're going to go to File up here. We're going to go to Export. Okay, and then we're going to go to media. We're going to go to export. We're going to go to media. And then um, sometimes this is open to another, uh, another setting. What we use in our newsroom, uh, we use H264. And then you're going to go to the presets. Okay, right here. And you're going to go, we're going to choose um, high quality, 1080p, and that's right here, 1080p HD. 
and then the next thing that we do uh, is the is the name that you want it to be titled once it's once it exports as a file and I'm just gonna put this as I'm gonna I'm gonna take sequence out of the name and then we're just gonna put SOT and then and then we're just gonna leave that in there um, I'm just gonna put SOT and then because it does have b-roll at the end I'm just gonna put SOT b-roll um, community garden okay and then our location this is super 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 important and then we're gonna export that and we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna save this on that folder that already have all these clips um, you you choose wherever you want to save it to okay um, right there and don't change anything right here this is all set and we do save and then we go to the bottom to do our actual export and then um, that's it we click export and then it starts doing its thing it's gonna take like a couple like a quick quick minute hopefully maybe it'll go faster and obviously you would be you would use this same method to export uh, the b-roll by itself uh, once again at television stations pretty much any TV station on the planet for Vosots they'll use they'll export they'll use one sequence for the b-roll they'll export that one and then they'll create the SOTs the interviews on a separate sequence okay and then if we go into I'm gonna do a command H and then we're gonna go into Oh, so that, that's already open, and then there, there it is right there. There's the SOT, and it's always a good idea. I think we talked about this, um, that we watch our clips, our final exported file, just to make sure that it's playing back properly. Okay, there's the B-roll. Um, making the transition out and there's our sequencing we go from a wide a medium to a wide shot and there's the there's the end of the story uh, one thing that that those of you who are going to be working at a television station you're gonna have to have uh, when you start working in our newsroom for for the SOT you're gonna have to have one second of silence before the actual SOT begins, okay? And I can explain that to you guys individually and or when you start uh, working in the newsroom and or volunteering in the newsroom, okay? Um, I think that's it. And we will end this session. I'm sorry, I thought it was gonna be shorter. Um, and I think that's it. If you have questions, do not hesitate to communicate with me and or anybody else in class. Um, I'm going to end this and I'm not too sure what tutorial we're going to after that. Thank you. Goodbye.